thought leaders. And so you see this word open so often, but people don't really understand necessarily that it can have so many different meanings and it can have so many different um, ways of being important to how we develop laws and policies uh, for the internet. And how important is it to New Zealand, to our future, to the, the future of the internet here? Uh, it's not only important uh, for us in New Zealand, but uh, for us around the world. So the internet is a global distributed network of networks. And when you start to introduce closure at one point, um, then you see that kind of permeating uh, through the rest of the network. So I think that we, in order to really embrace our economic, social, and cultural opportunities uh, presented by the internet, we need to ensure that it remains open. What do you think was the most sort of interesting or, I suppose, important point for you in, in the talk today? Well, for me, I really appreciated um, the nearly eight points of openness that he went through. And I think that really illustrates how broad the concept can be, but how it can apply from things that are d as discrete as open standards, which are the languages or the protocols that the internet or the World Wide Web are built on, um, to a philosophy about openness. And you see a whole, a whole range in between, like a spectrum. Um, and so I think that his being able to define and to address open government, open data, open access, open standards, and finally the open internet and many in between, I really appreciated his giving depth to the, the open definition. Towards the end of his speech, he raised some concerns about sort of the ability of governments and ISPs and things like that to shut down mm -hmm. openness. Is that a concern which, which Internet New Zealand thinks is happening here or the one that you want to fight against? Well, so Internet NZ, what we do is we strive to protect and promote the Internet for New Zealand. And there will be times when laws are introduced or suggested here and abroad that could threaten um, those kind of open values that we're talking about. And we see a lot of that in areas um, like copyright law. Um, Sir Tim mentioned copyright law. Um, and we also see important, we need to balance important considerations, for example, of free flow of information across borders with how uh, governments want to maintain the security of their data um, for national security. So I think that we do see that often, and that's really what Internet NZ is about, is about making sure to advocate for policies that protect and promote the open Internet, at the same time recognizing that sometimes openness does create challenges that we need to deal with in a very uh, transparent and narrow way. Can I just, on the copyright issue, can I just touch on the Copyright Tribunal sure. decision today um, that came out? Yep. Um, what, I mean, what do you say this decision meaning for internet users in New Zealand? Um, to be honest, not much. Uh, we've seen these regimes happen in France, for example. France um, was one of the first after South Korea and Taiwan, though they got less exposure. Um, one of the first jurisdictions to actually enact one of these uh, graduated response or three strikes laws. Um, France has made the decision subsequently to uh, remove a lot of its funding from the Hadoopi regime, the legal regime there, because if you look at the investment required and all of the trade-offs that come with laws like that, for example, data retention, uh, privacy concerns, and even extra liability for people who don't infringe copyright, you have to think about all that aggregate cost and what it's serving at the end of the day. So I think that... Um, this we've seen that Rianne's will take the procedure through um, and see it see it all the way through, but I think going forward we need to really ask ourselves whether this kind of law is worth it and placing all of that burden on account holders and intermediaries, um, and you know we'll just have to take a look from there. Because at the end of the day, do you think that it is going to stop the average person? starting the rules, I guess, to get music online and that sort of thing? Not the three strikes regime, no. Um, I think that it does raise awareness for um, a certain section of people, um, but in terms of actually changing the behavior, we have to realize that these laws are still treating copyright as if they exist in the tangible <laughs> era. Um, and so if you're going after people for downloading copies, you're not really understanding how the 
the internet works and how its users behave. Um, but I do think that there are a lot of people out there who do, they make a moral choice that they'd like to um, offer some compensation for, for what they enjoy. And just as Sir Tim said earlier, making it easy for them to do the right thing. I think that's important.